Hey. Hello, welcome back to Love Mish, where we talk about all things personal, plus size, and Polynesian. Today, I'm going to be giving you some ideas on how you can best love your friends and your family and your spouses and all the people that you will be buying gifts for this holiday season in their specific love language. Let's get into it. Okay, first things first. Do you know your love language? And if you don't, I'll leave the link down below so you can take the quiz. It's your love language is how you best feel loved right now. And it can change over time. So the five love languages was written by Dr. Gary Chapman. This book I feel like is just really important in helping us think about how we communicate with others. They talk a lot about there being like a cup, your love tank. That's what it was. They talk a lot about having your love tank full. And that means that there are different things that mean something to some people and don't mean as much to other people and so trying to keep people's tank full is how we throw these five love languages into the mix there so are five love languages there is words of affirmation which means that your words they matter they want to hear the compliments they like those kind of things the way that they want to receive love is through your words so this could be like writing them a poem um, these are the type of people who really thrive off of like a, a nice compliment and they're good for like the whole day. Like your words mean a lot to these people. You can get like a mason jar and fill it full of like compliments or like 100 reasons why I love you or 25 reasons why I love you if you don't want to write that much. Just something that they can like look at. There are a lot of sites online where you can make like custom books. Make a book about your love story or make a book about a trip that you guys went on so that they have something that they can read and look back on and reflect on that would be meaningful to them. One thing that I feel like is up my alley is making videos for people. You can also do things like scrapbooking. You can also do like a 12 day, like leave them letters on like the bathroom mirror or make letters for them like for the 12 days leading up to Christmas. I think the cool thing about words of affirmation is that this particular love language does not cost any money at all. The second is physical touch. Physical touch, those are your feely people. They all, those five senses, they wanna hold you close, they wanna hold your hand, they're gonna hug you. Your girl is quite an OPE, not gonna lie. I am very affectionate, I'm going to hug you. If I see that you initiate a hug or you give me a good hug, that makes me feel so loved. I am a very like texture aware person. Does that make sense? Like the things on my body, the things around me, like they have to be nice and comforting and soft. So if things are itchy, no go. It's a no go. We hate those. So gifts that you can give would be things like weighted blankets, soft blankets, really we love the blankets. Like a gift certificate to get a massage or buying like massage oil so that you can offer to like massage your feet later. Anything to do with the touch. Especially during the holiday season, you're gonna wanna think what will make them feel warm and cozy and like I am hugging them even if I can't physically hug them. So. Moving on to quality time. Quality time, these are the people that really need you to put your phone down. When you're having dinner they want to be on those long drives they want to have your uninvited attention they just want to be with you a good gift for people whose love language is quality time would be things like scheduling dates or like a picnic things that you can do together make a box like an electronic box so that you guys can have that at your dinner table to put your phones away so that when you're eating dinner it is just you and the person you're giving them your undivided attention gift them a puzzle and maybe like a bag of snacks, things that you guys can do together because while you're working on a puzzle, you can be eating snacks, hanging out, listening to a podcast. Even if you can't go outside, the movie night in your house, the blankets down, yada yada, pop in the popcorn. Another good one is to golf together. Taking the initiative to plan like road trips could even be to like down the road. I think that would make them feel super love. So, we'll go into Helton's love language. So Helton's love language is acts of service. The people whose love language is acts of service, they want you to be about it. So it's all about what you do. So some gift ideas for people who like the service. You can make a coupon book of service things that you're willing to do for them. Like here is a free coupon for me doing the dishes. Help out around the house. Be more mindful of things that need to be done like laundry or vacuuming and just do it without being told. I also think practical gifts like a Roomba, which takes away a chore that they have to do or something like that that could vacuum would be really cool. For people of access service, if you go get their oil change in their car, I think that's a 
good gift gift cards to the nail salon or even like a monthly subscription box to like groceries so that they don't have to do those things it's kind of just because we're in a pandemic i know it's kind of hard to do these things physically in person but things that could lessen their load of things to do during the day shows them that you're willing to put forth the effort will probably make them feel super loved so the fifth love language is receiving gifts and i know that this is kind of a love language that a lot of people just don't want because it seems materialistic but it actually is one of my favorites here's why Receiving gifts doesn't necessarily that mean that you're going to spend a ton of money buying this person everything that they want. Receiving gifts means that this person really values when you put a lot of thought into something that you are giving to them. So that could be when you're coming home from work, you stop by and get their favorite boba drink on your way here. Or when you see something like an ornament in the store or a candy, like you come and bring it home. I think tangible things are important. It's more so not about the cost, but about the thought that is put into these things. People who have the love language of receiving gifts also give the best gifts. They think really long and hard into how they can best make you happy. They really thrive off of that, like, like, like get really excited when they give you things. For people whose love language is receiving gifts, I want you to think about personalization. I think that personalizing things will be very, very important with these people because it means that you didn't just buy like a gift basket of like random lotions from Walmart and dropped it off at their doorstep. It means that you thought like, hey, they like this specific scent they like this color, they like this whatever, this one time they told me about this and you made something, you put something together and you thought of them and you like, and that was the gift. So personalization, so personalized pictures, personalized gift baskets. You can even make your own, like things like subscription boxes. I think my sister really loves um, opening up surprises and I think that's important because that's her love language. Giving them flowers or chocolate covered strawberries, planning a spa night for them thinking about things that you guys can go do together kind of like quality time personalized jewelry think about snacks anything of that sort anything that makes you think like oh i think they'd really like this when it comes to receiving gifts it doesn't have to be expensive and it doesn't have to put you out it just has to be important to you that they are thought of when you're buying them gifts you know how on our jack-in-the-box mukbang um that i'll be linking right there how husband was like communication is key well this that that tells you how to communicate more effectively we should be wanting to do these things with our relationships so go read the book on page 62 he says learning to listen may be as difficult as learning a foreign language but learn we must if we want to communicate love Ooh, ooh, this is another one for those who are physical touch like myself it says if the physical presence of your spouse is important to you, I urge you to verbalize that to your spouse because again, the other half, they can't read your mind as much as we expect them to. Your kids, they can't read your mind. You gotta communicate. What do I feel like I do like this when I am talking? <sighs> you know, I wonder if people are gonna be like, Mish, you're not a doctor. Not yet. What are you guys buying during Christmas? Let me know. I want to know these things. Let, let me know you. I hope you enjoyed these gift ideas for the different love languages. Don't forget to comment down below what your love language is and let me know if you think of any other cool ideas that I can add to this list. I'll be making some slides to put up on my Instagram at lovemish. I hope you guys are having a good holiday season. Don't forget to tell me where you're shopping because I really want to know. Um, stay safe, be kind, and I'll see you next time.